Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework bi-weekly sync call. I'm uh, Paolo Pilorsi and today I'm your host uh, for this uh, uh, bi-weekly call. So um, just to give you a quick overview of what we are going to see today, we will have uh, a look at the uh, PMP, Microsoft 365 Community Projects updates to see where we are with all of the uh, main projects in the area of the client-side development. Then uh, we will move to three great demos, one from Nikolai, one from Marcus Muller, and one from Dan Toft. So uh, first of all, uh, let's start uh, uh, digging into the community uh, project. And let me say and share with you that anyone can contribute to the Microsoft 365 uh, uh, community. You can do it by providing demos in these community calls. And if you want to do that, you can go to AKMS slash M365 PMP request demo and you can fill a form and request to uh, provide the demo. Uh, you can uh, contribute to the GitHub repositories. Uh, indeed, we have plenty of uh, GitHub repositories that you can uh, uh, contribute to. You can create uh, issues, you can submit pull requests, uh, you can uh, contribute and give back to the community, as well as you can uh, uh, provide feedback through the channels that we have, again, through the uh, issue uh, list in the GitHub repositories or reaching out to the community. And uh, this is the best way to be active part of the Microsoft 365 platform community. You can also uh, learn uh, by uh, uh, watching uh, uh, plenty of videos which are available in the AKMS M365 videos uh, uh, YouTube channel, as well as you can uh, have a look to the open source project that we provide as the community, as well as to the uh, rich set of samples that we have in the samples galleries. In order to uh, avoid to have to remember all of the URLs, you can just go to AKMS slash M365 slash community. And from there, you will find direct link to all of the content provided and shared by the community for the community. Uh, we also have uh, a set of uh, community calls uh, bi-weekly or weekly community calls. Uh, every Tuesday, we have the Microsoft 365 platform uh, community call, as well as we have the identity platform one, the office audience ones, and the power platform one, together with the bi-weekly calls that we manage uh, as the Microsoft 365 uh, uh, community. And again, go to akms slash community slash calls, and from there, you will find a direct link to all of the community calls. Uh, and uh, just about that, uh, next week, uh, on the 31st of January, we will have the Microsoft 365 platform call, uh, where you will be able to see a couple of uh, really cool demos from Nancy Anda and uh, Ashwin Gaur and from Thomas uh, Schaldek. So uh, AKMS uh, M365 dev call, uh, and you will be able to join us uh, and uh, enjoy the call. That said, if you are a beginner in the area of the community, if you want to learn how to contribute, I think that David will be more than happy to share with us how we can start contributing with the community. Right, David? Boy, Paolo, would I be happy. You betcha. So, friends, if you're new to the community or just getting involved and want to help out, want to contribute in these amazing places, Sharing is Caring is a program that's here to provide hands-on guidance. What does that mean? It means we're going to join sessions live together, show you how to do things like Contribute via GitHub if you're not quite familiar with how that works. These are safe space, non-recorded sessions where you're going to collaborate with other members of the community, MVPs, Microsoft employees, and we can work and learn together. Absolutely free. We've got more sessions coming up in February. Just finished a writing for the web session this week, so a lot more goodness coming up. All you need to do is uh, sign up for any of them, and you can do that at ak.ms slash sharing is caring. Now, once you have contributed, we want to recognize you for all the amazing work that you're doing, and that is our community recognition program here to provide that. This is a, another free program that is provided by this community, and we're going to formally and officially recognize all the amazing work that you're doing with these Credly badges that can be associated to your LinkedIn profile, shared on Twitter, shared on LinkedIn, put onto your resume, your blog, Twitter, you got it. You can put them anywhere. So we do need you to opt in, though. aka.ms slash community slash recognition. So many new opportunities this year. CLI, adaptive cards, PNP PowerShell, list formatting. You're going to see some SPFX samples coming up soon. So Get opted in. We want to recognize you. Paolo, back to you. Thank you, David. And it is now time uh, to see what's going on in the SharePoint framework area. So, Visa, please uh, 
uh, let yeah. us know. Quick updates from here. We're keeping the pace because again, we have three demos today, so we need to keep on the pace. Um, but quickly here, we, we are not having a nice growth after the holiday break as expected. Uh, so January is always a growth month. Uh, the highest, all time highest usage in SPFX all up across all of the products and Microsoft 365 worldwide is now 17th of January, which is awesome. And the usage is off the roof, which is beautiful. Let's go to the following slide. Um, a big area where we are investing uh, is of course the Microsoft uh, Viva. Uh, of course, not forgetting about intranets and the SharePoint and all of that and Teams, uh, but Viva is currently the super hot thing uh, internally at least, um, and we're seeing a growth externally as well. And the latest uh, mon learn module there is together with Andrew Connells, uh, which is around the ACE development. So please have a look on this. AKMS uh, Viva ACE Learn is the learn module, and it's free to consume as well. Now let's go to the following slide. We did cover the latest and the roadmap on SPFX actually on Tuesday's call, so I'm not going to spend too much time in here. 1.16.1 is the recommended version to be used in production right now. 1.16 had a, a bit of a small, not critical issues, but 1.16.1 is, is by far the recommended option. It's more optimized. And 1.17 is ETA right now in March. And uh, there's an ongoing discussion, will it be March or April? Uh, so I cannot promise that in first quarter, maybe it might change a bit in order to go to April, but a lot of, lot of new stuff coming in uh, 1.17 as well. But let's go to the open source projects and uh, next. Sure. So let's talk about the open source project then. In, uh, in PMP, we have a bunch of uh, open source uh, community projects starting from the PMP JS client side library. I think Julie is here to help us to understand what's going on there. I am. Thank you, Paulo. Uh, we will have a new release on February 10th, version 3.12. We'll, as always, have general documentation updates. And as so far in our month, we have fixed an unhandled promise issue in the start method of t the based timeline object for the base of the entire library. Uh, it was very minor situation. In general, most people wouldn't hit it, but it is fixed and will be released with that next release. I'm sure there'll be some other things. There are some bubbling PRs coming through, so we'll have more and I'll be able to update more uh, next time we meet as usual. If you have a PR, you see it merged and it's important to you, you can check it out by using the V3 nightly build. So every night, any new PRs that will merge will uh, be merged and in, built into a new version of the library that you can test out in your projects uh, before the official release happens. And to keep on top of everything that's happening, follow us M365 PMPJS on Twitter. And we do also post to the PNP LinkedIn page if uh, you are following that. And that is all I have for the moment. Thanks, Paulo. Thank you, Julie. It's now time to talk about the CLI for Microsoft 365 Community Project. So Gary, please update us. Thank you. Thanks, Paolo. So uh, the new uh, uh, V6.2 beta uh, is out. You can go and download that today. Uh, tons more commands that have been added um, in this beta release. So we've got OneNote, Power Platform, SharePoint, Purview, and Teams all included. Um, we have uh, commands in there for AI builder and publishing solutions. Um, SharePoint, if you're doing anything with sharing files, uh, sharing folders, sharing lists and items, then definitely check out the new commands. Um, we've also got more on uh, purview with retention uh, labels. And also, if you want to send uh, messages to channels like an adaptive card, uh, you can do that through the CLI now. Um, so if you want to get a hold of the new beta, uh, you can go to NPM and use the at next uh, tag. And you can use Docker as well. You can use our, our Docker image. Uh, just use the next tag there. Uh, please check out the release notes for all the details and lots more changes as well that have been added. Um, and if you want to keep up the conversation, please follow us on Twitter at CLI Microsoft 365. And if you're on Discord, please join our Discord uh, community as well, where it's, uh, it's all going off. <laughs> Um, but uh, Paolo, let's uh, go to the next slide. Yep. Uh, so we have uh, just an update on the Microsoft Graph developer proxy. Um, so we, our current version is uh, 0 0.3, which you can download from the link uh, in, in front of you there, where we added simulating errors on Graph, other APIs, uh, so your custom APIs and SharePoint Online as well, and some guidance. Uh, but what I want to tell you today is we have a release coming up. So the 0 0.4 release is due next week. 
uh, January the 31st, where we're going to include Microsoft Graph beta endpoint detection, uh, improvements to the ca uh, console output that I know we've had some great feedback on. So thank you all for that. Um, and also we've uh, done some re-architecting as well to go to a plugin uh, uh, architecture, which will enable developers to uh, to hook into the proxy and add their own behaviors uh, going forwards. Um, and with that, back to you, Paolo. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. And now let's talk about the reusable SPFX controls with Alex Terentiev. Thank you, Paola. So uh, we are on 3.12 in React controls, 3.11 for React property controls uh, for a while already. And that's why I'm encouraging all of you not only to uh, report some issues or improvements if you find them helpful, but also feel free to create uh, PRs. We are happy to review these PRs and we really need uh, help from community in making the library even uh, better because uh, unfortunately, uh, all of people who are in like core team right now have not much availability. So please, please, please help us uh, create PRs. Uh, we are happy to review them. And uh, of course, you'll be listed as uh, uh, contributors and uh, as part of our great community. Thank you. Back to you. And you, will, and you will also get a badge from the PMP community. Oh, yeah, for contribute. sure. So yes. One, yes, one more reason sure. to contribute, right? So that said, uh, we uh, should talk about the Viva Connection Toolkit uh, for Visual Studio Code. I think Beza can update us on that one. Yes, nothing too dramatical here. Uh, so this is a great tool, uh, even when you're not implementing stuff for Viva Connection. So it works in any SharePoint framework solution, and it gives you the, the quick access on the call-up task and all of those if you're not super familiar with them. Again, you don't have to use it. If you want to, you can use it. It overlays on top of existing Yeoman generated and CLI for Microsoft 365. Uh, we'll release some videos on this one pretty, pretty soon uh, with me, David, and Hugo. So more on that later. Thank you, Visa. Talking about the PMP modern search uh, here, uh, we are at the release 4.8, uh, the one that we released uh, around the SPC 22 conference uh, last November. Uh, there are no uh, additional updates on that one, mainly because the uh, library and the web parts are uh, really, really complete. So uh, right now there is almost nothing that we need more, but we're open to feedback. So if you have any other need, just let us know in the GitHub repo and we will do our best to improve those uh, controls. That said, uh, let me switch to uh, David and or Hugo to talk about the uh, samples that we have uh, about SPFX. Awesome. How about David and I uh, split it? I'll take care of the uh, web part and extension samples, and David will take care of the adaptive card extensions. Uh, so Wonderful. on the web part and uh, SPFX extensions, we've got uh, three new samples. Uh, Nick Brown has updated the Fluent UI uh, 9 web part, which actually demonstrates how to use the Fluent UI uh, 9 controls, and he's updated it to SPFX 16.1. Uh, or 116.1. We have a new interactive um, map by Sergey uh, Schwabauer, and it actually allows you to display a work ma world map. You can set custom markers directly in the map. Uh, you can configure each marker, and you can even control things like the the color, the pin, the icons, and things like that. It's a very cool sample, uh, and it's about to be uh, published on the repo very shortly. And then Niels Anderson uh, has actually updated the page navigator to fix an issue where it assumed uh, correctly that H1 was the highest level uh, uh, of a heading on a page. But the reality is sometimes people make headings that are, you know, start at level two, level three. Uh, so this makes provision for that. Uh, we welcome your contributions and thank everyone to all the cool samples that you do. And uh, let's move on to Adaptive Cargis extensions with David. Awesome. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, one to show off this week, present status with Presence Graph API by Eves Habersat. How awesome is this to be able to see that within your ACE? So definitely take a look. Thank you for this sample. Check them all out, ak.ms slash SPFX dash ACEs. Uh, and we would absolutely love more samples. And you get a badge. Paolo, back to you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Hugo. And it is now time for the picture, the community picture. So please, Visa, start sharing uh, your screen and do the magic. Yep, I will do that. We are amazingly almost on time. This is pretty yeah. cool. So uh, we're trying to because do this in the first quarter. 
<laughs> that's, that's because you're hosting, not not that I'm hosting. <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> 50 seats in a room. We're not yet recording. Let's wait for a few more. Oh, that that is actually really full. Okay, so I will put the recording on uh, and let's do some hand waving, everybody. Awesome to see a full screen, full room on the on the auditorium, and a lot of familiar faces. Excellent, great mood, great excitement. Really cool to see you on the call. Excellent. Brilliant, everybody. We'll craft a key animation out of that for sure and get that one shared in social media. That's, by the way, Twitter and LinkedIn if you're interested on crafting that for the future usage. Now, let's actually go to the stars of today. Right, Paula? Yeah, and now we have a demo from Nikolai Belik about building SPFX visual file presenter for Teams and SharePoint. So please, Nikolai, take it away. Okay, so it's about uh, actually building a web part, uh, which is replacing the old classic visual web part uh, to this, which is for, for the modern experience. Sorry, I'm kind of, haven't done it for a while, so bear with me. Who am I basically? Yeah, I'm a software developer based in Vienna, Austria now. Yeah, I'm former MVP from Visio and Office Services. Yeah, and uh, you can find my profiles in the GitHub, like Stack Overflow, LinkedIn, and lastly, I was working for the Visplan. Check out these guys as well and our like strategic planning. Yeah. So, what is it about? Yeah. So the motivation. Uh, let me maybe show first what it is about. Yeah. So that it could be easier to understand. It is about building a a web part which is available from the Microsoft App Source, right? And that anybody can install actually and, uh, you know, use in their organization and bring in that um, web part to the store. So it is about this diagram frame web part. Let me show what it is about. It's about in the previous version of the view of uh, SharePoint, you had a possibility to create, a, uh, to embed Visio drawings. Visio is basically a diagramming tool for Microsoft Office, and you had a, you know, a nice uh, web part which allowed you to embed, like, you know, drawings in your page and uh, give it some options. Here you can see the previous experience, like of SharePoint, like 2016, like something like that, right? Unfortunately, that was like experience was uh, discontinued after migrating to SharePoint Online, right? And for SharePoint Online, yeah, there is only a file viewer, but the file viewer does not really provide a lot of options uh, for the for, for viewing visual diagrams. And here, for example, yeah, let me maybe briefly show like, yeah, before you had like, you know, uh, options to disable pan, like disable like status bar, and you know like disable some animations, for example, and uh, customize the sizes of that screen and so on. And out of the box now, right, you can only set just the basic properties of that thing, like, and it will be uh, showing always the same view. So this diagram frame the part, right, is actually enhancing the built-in think with the new capabilities. So you can see it here, right, on the live demo. So when you add a modern page, right, that old word parts are not available. So you can only have a chance now to provide either a file viewer, which is like limited in the way I just said, right, or this new web part. And this is basically the web part that has been built, yeah? So, what you can do here, you can configure it, you know, with the file first, right? Using the speaking and thing, right? And then you can set you know, about the same more or less set of parameters you had before on the, you know, on the old web part. For example, you can hide like diagram boundary and, you know, like disable some interactivity or enable some interactivity, select zoom, initial page, like basic stuff. Then probably, uh, you know, the file viewer will implement that. Yeah, and that web part can be, yeah, also like expired or not needed anymore. But for now, it is. It can be a good replacement, I guess, for the, you know, for embedding visual diagrams into SharePoint pages. Yeah. So let me get back to the demo, right? 
So this is like basically the motivation to replace the existing part and also like like always there is a good reason and you know like practical reason the good reason was to build uh, this replacement and provide it basically for anybody who want to install it right because it's like you can install it from the store yeah you can just go to the app source over here right and just type for example this is the public microsoft site right diagram frame you don't need to and then just get it right and it will be uploaded to your app catalog yeah, on the when when you get it right, it will be downloaded to your tenants at us and installed into your app catalog. Yeah. Let me just show like it's already installed here. Yeah. So after that, you will be able just to use it like directly without having to install it like explicitly to your organization. Yeah. That is uh, kind of difference from uh, what is usually done with the demo web part yeah for that you need to upload it through the partner center but let's come to that later a little bit yeah okay so basically it's done using visio online api which is like office gs roped in a code and then uh, some components like uh, that were just mentioned right are also employed to build this web part it's like fluent ui uh the previous version of the library like number eight right not the not the latest one yeah then also like uh, spfx controls library which is like providing a lot of useful things like you know file picker and so on just was we which were just used as is or improved a little bit for this uh, part right so let me show one more thing here as a next step right this part, this web part is basically open source, so you can go to the GitHub, uh, right, and uh, just check the full source code of it. And it is exactly the same uh, web part that is published in the App Store. Okay. And then this is like clarifying the replacement. How it works, yeah? It works basically through online API of Visio, yeah? And this API allows you to embed your code your basically a uh, video frame into your custom page or your custom web part right and also it provides a basic method for manipulating it like you know like setting the size of it for example like showing uh, or hiding toolbars basically all the properties you have seen on the diagram uh, on the on the sidebar on the web part settings right those are all available or set configured with api right and yeah if we go to the code for that thing, right? You show then it is a, just a standard web part basically uh, created uh, using the SharePoint generator, right? And the root which is just dropped um, a top element, which is like acting as a container or iframe which is containing Visio in terms, yeah. So for the details, I think it's better to navigate to the actually GitHub and look in there, but I mean, just to give an idea that how it works so that you have a top element, right? And then on loading, it just initialized that with the Visio, like, you know, with Visio API by creating embedded iframe and then in, uh, runs Visio in that uh, iframe to load the drawing, yeah. The one of the challenges here could be the you know resolving the URL of the file. I mean, Visio can be the diagram can be specified, for example, uh, that is like not belonging to the current website, or it can come from the you know the uh, OneDrive, or it can be a share link, and to resolve that into something that can be understood by the Visio API, right? That is a little bit tricky and you know it's done using the also like SharePoint API and for that this PNP GS library is also used yeah like for picking as well uh, like for yeah picking as well picking files okay let me get back to the presentation so from the spfix controls library it's basically using the placeholder to have a nice you know, APIs when it is not configured yet and then it's using the file picker element which is like used to basically 
provide the list of files and folders and uh, help users with the navigating to the file. And then there can be some other points of interest like compared to the, uh, in addition to the code, right? That is like in the project, uh, the project is built basically using Azure DevOps. And uh, there is a configuration to build this uh, project for the SPFX web part. So all this is actually public, so you can check out how it's uh, configured basically if you are interested in building like, you know, the web part in a continuous uh, basis, like with the releases, for example, when you produce a new release, you don't deploy everything like manually, but have it like automated by the Azure DevOps. Another, like, you know, maybe point of interest here could be the localization of the web part, right? And I want to, you know, highlight the great SPFX localization extensions, uh, extension in case you have not seen it, like by you know, through it's like you will find the links like afterwards, like in the demo presentation. Yeah. So as a last step, maybe I could uh, tell a little bit about publishing procedure to the source, to the app source, how to bring it, yeah, and how to make it possible to be downloadable from the uh, store. First, you need to register at the partner center, right? And then you basically submit the application for the partner center for the review, right? And the main challenge for me was actually like, you know, to create some documents, right? Like, you know, uh, user documentation and privacy policies, such of a paperwork a little bit, yeah. Also, it took about like one month, like yeah, to have a application reviewed and you know like testing, test tested more or less by the submission team, yeah. And I'm really grateful to those guys who helped me to you know fix the things and have it like rolled out to the store. Yeah, just a, one more maybe like link and what it looks like in the partner center when you push the stuff there if you are when you go to the partner center right you have a possibility to push things to the store and that's basically marketplace offers right and if you click that one right you can you work from here right and it is actually all described more or less there it is just the path yeah, one need to take to have it like rolled out just to provide some links as well Yeah, for the presentation and uh, where can you find the things related to this web part. First, the repository, of course, right? Then you have the app source and the website uh, where the documentation for this web part uh, actually is yeah my contacts are below yeah and back to you yeah if you have some questions please go ahead and ask them in the chat as well yeah Thanks. thank you thank you nikolai uh, great and really useful uh, demo uh, we now switch to marcus muller so if you want to share your screen marcus feel free to and marcus will well, show us how to extend pmp react spfx list view control with a contextual menu so please go ahead Yes, hello from my side. I think I can catch up some minutes. Um, will be a quick one today. I want to like quickly uh, like to show you how to extend the known PNP React list view control. We already talked about uh, React controls uh, this call, and also there was a great blog post out this week by Vesa on this project. Really quick introduction. Uh, about me. My name is Markus Möller. For those who don't know me, I'm a Microsoft 365 developer expert. I work for Avanade in Germany. I'm a Microsoft MVP for M365 development since 2021. And you can reach out to me on Twitter or comment on my blog posts. Let's directly jump into my demo. First, uh, most of you hopefully already know the standard list view control uh, which is available in the pnp spfx controls um, we see this library here how does this look like in this really simple implementation it would maybe look like this yeah and the 
Good thing is compared to SharePoint list uh, standard view is of course you can render anything here. Can be SharePoint data, can be search results, can be database data, whatever, but you can render it in a SharePoint like design. Yeah? Um, but what we miss here, for instance, when we compare this to a SharePoint standard list, maybe a control bar, that's another control, or a so-called edit control block or contextual menu. And this is what I customly implemented and in, uh, intended to place here in the third column. I can click uh, simply click that. I have three actions here. I can click one and then I have my context. I know okay, I'm in the row of Hans and the action one was clicked. So really simple implementation here. I can do this the same way with an action two. And I know this is action two and another row is clicked. And I can even do this with a third action. And here now I'm using another, uh, here I'm using the last name as a reference. And that's all. So really quick, uh, simple demo, easy to implement. But how to do this? We'll show you in short illustration. The first thing or what we need for this uh, control to run is we need to uh, define the view fields. And as you can see here, uh, not in the uh, in the border, but uh, outside the border, we simply have our data rows here, like first name, last name, or street below. But in between, we want to insert something. Yeah, and this is uh, that we have a custom render option here. And this render option can simply split the data and render in between the columns. And the control that I'm rendering here called ECB is nothing else than this three dot more vertical icon. Yeah, this is an icon button, which only shows an icon with the icon name more vertical. These are three dots uh, yeah, in a vertical way. And additionally, below, we already can imagine that we have some actions here behind. Yeah? Um, I only show uh, uh, the first action here, so action one and the first divider, the others go quite the same way, as you can imagine that. Nothing else what I was inserting here. And when we click that, I made it really, really easy. Yeah? I was using the good old alert. Yeah, You should do that in production environments, of course. Yeah, It's got really annoying, but uh, for demonstration purposes, always works good and the easiest way to uh, achieve some results. Nothing else here. And that's it, how you can simply extend this control. Else you might think, um, what you can also use, of course, uh, is uh, the SPFX way of standard list extensions. We have the list command, which is can either uh, hijack or be included in the existing edit control block of a list view, or you can locate a totally different in the command bar above the list, yeah, then it's totally different. It's not on the source, but you can also, of course, then act on uh, multiple rows, which you selected before. That's different. Yeah, you can also maybe misuse uh, an existing column with the field customizer and not only render maybe the text field, but also additionally render uh, this control button I was showing. Yeah? Or you can totally erase a column and, and say, hey, I do not render anything, but my uh, edit control dog, yeah, but maybe that's not the best idea. But you cannot, like you have seen in my code, you cannot insert an additional column inside the existing SharePoint list view, which only renders something. Um, for list formatting, I don't see a chance here because you need JavaScript to render an, ext uh, an additional UI stuff here, like a uh, like a control block or what else. Um, but uh, or when you open a dialogue, for instance, or so, yeah, this is what I don't see available. Last not least, some resources. I have a blog post, and as you can see from the date, yeah, the, the blog post is really, really old, yeah, but I never shared the sample. Or I for totally forgot to share the sample. Um, so I catched up on this uh, over the Christmas time and published this as a PNP sample now and with the latest uh, Japan framework version as well. And last not least, there's also an existing documentation inside the PNP repo 
Yeah, I can maybe quickly switch back to that to close my demo. This is what I also wrote years ago, and I think it was a bit refactored. So when we scroll down here, come on. Yeah, we have also a small documentation about this, but if you're not sure about that, and I heard some criticism on my blog post recently, this was also a motivation to do it a bit better. Um, this is why I created the whole sample for your reference. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, really useful demo again. And it is really nice to see how we can extend the PMP React control, how uh, we can easily do that. So it is now time for a demo by Dan Toft. And Dan, you eventually you have a few more minutes if you like. And if not, uh, we can always have a QA and a huh? session at the end. Uh, so, OK, you already started sharing your screen. So please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'll try and keep it relatively short. Uh, my name is Dan. Uh, you can find me over on Twitter or pretty much uh, any social media platform these days. I work at a small consulting company here in Denmark called Evobis, and I am a SharePoint consultant developer like we all are, uh, do a little bit of everything. Um, and uh, this demo came about uh, actually sort of relevant with uh, Marcus's demo because it's about what we can do to, to query data from SharePoint lists. So we all know that there's a, a REST endpoint in SharePoint and there's Camel query. But there are some things that you can do with Camel Query that you can't do with with REST and so on. And uh, I was trying to make a, like showcase some way to to demo this. Uh, so I built a quick web part uh, that I'll just demo real quick here, where essentially what you do is you just take any list uh, and you can write some Camel Query and you can execute it. And we're actually just using the PNP reusable controls down here to just map out every field of the item. Uh, so there you go. You can add some data and you can use uh, the other sample just to interact with that data if you need to. And then I built in a couple of uh, custom queries just for, for like the demo here of some of the things we can do with Camel that we couldn't do with the REST endpoint. Uh, one of those would be querying things based on SharePoint groups. So if we have a small list here of some uh, some tasks that are going to be done. Uh, these should obviously not be in here. They should be in planner or to do. But uh, say you put them in SharePoint. We can use SharePoint groups uh, and query based on whether the user is added to one of these groups or not. So say I'm added um, to the IT department group. We can query, give me all the onboarding tasks for groups that I'm in. Uh, this is done using the membership thing. And we can just click execute. And there we go. I will get all the tasks that are assigned to the IT department. And of course, you can extend this the same way you could with anything else. Uh, you could do it with several queries. So you could go ahead and say all the tasks that aren't done. There you go. Uh, and one thing that you can do with Camel Query that I haven't found a way. So please, if somebody knows in the chat, go ahead. A way to query a URL field by the actual URL and not the title of the thing. I haven't found a good way to do that in. Uh, and the rest end points. Okay, so that's it for the, the demo of the actual like tool. And just a quick note, you can actually uh, grab the query part of your view or your your camel query and use that as a view for SharePoint lists. This will obviously break uh, in case somebody actually edits the view, but sometimes you want to do a, a list where you go ahead and say onboarding tasks, and you can go ahead and you can say my pending tasks. And there you go. It's again filtered based on the IT department. This is a great way to to do something where we're using custom code because we're using the PNP partial to set it, and there's no way to do this with the UI. Uh, but it's really fast. As for the code, well, I didn't want to focus too much on the list view thing because we I knew Marcus was doing the demo just before me. So one thing that I actually f thought I would highlight uh, is the uh, if, it's, if we're building functional components, we get this thing called the, the React context, which is really awesome. We had it in like class components too, but it's way more functional doing it in like modern functional components. So what we do is we create like our provider and then anywhere from there below in our code. So no matter how deep down you are in the component tree, you actually have the ability to, to like go ahead and, and grab those items as long as you're below that. 
which is really awesome. Um, because it avoids the thing where we used to like pass the SPFX context down all the way through all our components and you'd just be needlessly passing it around to, to get it to like somewhere where a list picker needed it. And then that's about it. Uh, I noticed a few people in the chat asking during the thing about like a modern way to like do a camel query building. And I just wanted to shout out, there's a library called CamelJS. Um, I think I might actually have it installed in here. I don't. Uh, there, there's a great like Chrome extension too, and it actually makes it like fluently to write uh, camel queries and translates them. And similarly, there's one called camel ex for like C sharp code that actually works really well. And I, I would like to shout, shout both of those out because as someone who came into the like SharePoint universe not that long ago, writing camel queries really sucks. Uh, they, they're, they're great for what they can do, but like writing them by by hand is a lot of work. Uh, and it's one of those things where I end up always missing like a small pack. Yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, there's a link to the sample, uh, a link to the documentation on Camel Queries, and a quick link to the reusable controls. Yeah, I saw see Paul all found it in the on the Chrome thing. That's it, it's like the best thing if you don't like writing Camel Queries. So what what I always end up doing is uh, I teach new new hires to write a Camel Query, and then we go ahead and write it with that thing. And it's way faster, way easier. And that's it for my demo. Thank you, Dan. Yet another great demo. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen. And now that we are talking about uh, building uh, Camel queries and uh, uh, working with Camel, I saw in the chat a few people mentioning the old good days and the Camel builder and all that kind of stuff that we used to use in the past. And uh, it is, this is totally not planned to be in this uh, call, but I think it is not a problem. Actually, it is an opportunity. Uh, let me share that in the PMP organization, we have the whole source code of the Camel Builder, the one of the old, uh, good old days. Uh, thanks to Karim Bosch, who decided to share the whole source code uh, with the community. We have this repository. I'm not sure that we already shared this information uh, or not, but now I'm sharing it. And we are also looking for people in the community willing to renew this tool and maybe make it like a new modern web part or something like that. So here you find the whole source code, give it an eye if you want. You can download and use it as like as you used to do in the past, but you can also start modernizing it if you like. And we now, as the community, Paolo. we will be more than happy to do that. Yes, Lisa. Yeah. I will ask a few questions about this. Can you first explain what is camel for those who don't that this might be a completely new term for half oh. of the people in this call? We're somehow magically assuming that people know what is camel. That's now not you're making me feel really case. old. <laughs> <laughs> but you are totally right, totally right. Camel, uh, are actually, I don't recall anymore what the acronym is, but camel is the acronym of a language that you can use uh, to build queries in uh, uh, SharePoint uh, lists and libraries. So it is the language, XML based language, that we used to use in the past at least uh, to write uh, the structure of views and queries while working with uh, SharePoint and uh, uh, developing SharePoint solutions. Nowadays, we don't use it very often, even if every now and then we still use a camel. Maybe we don't know that it is camel, but we use it to filter. For example, when you create a, a custom view and you export a view with uh, uh, the PMP provisioning engine, in the content of the provisioning template, there will be the XML of the camel defining the filter. And it was collaborative application markup language. Thank you, Vesa. Uh, so uh, that's the basic idea of uh, camel. It was really fundamental in the past. It is kind of well hidden nowadays, but still completely there, correct? me if I'm wrong, Visa. Uh, and yes, it's still yeah. behind after scenes uh, in good and bad, so to say. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> precisely. And so the Camel Builder was a desktop, Windows desktop application to design, graphically design the uh, Camel queries rather than writing uh, them, them manually and in XML syntax. It was really cool and useful because it was uh, able to give you a preview of the results of the query, and then you were able to copy and paste the Camel query into your actual uh, code. Um, of course, a desktop version and specifically a desktop version for Windows is not necessarily really useful nowadays, 
but a renewed version, which will be cross-platform and eventually with a web UI, I think uh, would be really, really useful and interesting. And as you can see from the uh, structure of this repository, you can already see that there are multiple layers. So you can eventually think about rebuilding the UI, uh, trying to keep the backend infrastructure still uh, uh, as it is. But this is just a, a random idea. So. Now, now, I just now, wanted Paolo, to share how this. Biased, yeah. How biased you are for saying that Camel is awesome because it was XML. I'm just watching the chat uh, where you apparently have books <laughs> related on XML and all of that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I have to share that and then I, I will move eventually to a Q&A. There is a, a very good friend of mine who told me many years ago, Paolo, you love XML. XML sooner or later will disappear and will be well hidden under the cover of everything, but nobody will see it. Well, my friend was right, but I was right too, because XML is actually under the cover of many of the technologies that we use nowadays. So that's why I loved and I still love it. <laughs> okay. Sorry for this short personal story. Okay, no, no. Uh, okay. that's okay. it. We still have 10 minutes. Do we want to run a short Q&A? Do we want to close it early? We what can, do we want to do? We can, if there's any questions, uh, <laughs> there's more like everybody is just memorizing the Campbell and XMLs now on the chat. <laughs> so if there's no questions, we can, of course, uh, close a bit earlier today. Um, there was a, I can recap one question, uh, even on audio, because there was a question just before, when we were about to start, just a recap, which is an understandable question in SharePoint Framework Call, uh, because this is the Viva Connection and SharePoint Framework Call. There was a question related on on-premises support for SharePoint Framework, and will it be adjusted for the SharePoint Subscription Edition? Uh, SharePoint Subscription Edition actually was shipped or released already uh, more than a year ago as the latest version for SharePoint on-premises. And just to be clear, and I know that it might be a bit disappointing, we're not looking into adjusting uh, the supported SPFX version in on-premises. Unfortunately, the team would like to do that. Unfortunately, that's not possible unless the UX layer of SharePoint on-premises in the SharePoint subscription edition will be modernized. And for now, that has not happened. Now, will it happen in the future at some point? We don't know. That's a separate discussion. Just a recap on that one. Uh, I also wanted to actually call out, and, and next week on Tuesday in the platform community call, uh, we will actually have an end-to-end -end feature and functionality coverage of what is Microsoft Viva Home, which is currently rolling out uh, within the uh, within Microsoft 365 as a free service for every single tenant. So it's a, it's a really cool uh, demo and really cool to, or it's a great opportunity to actually understand from the PMs who created the Viva Home, how is it intended to work and behave and all of that. It won't be really extensibility as a primary thing. I uh, will probably mention that a bit as a final thing, but it's more on understanding what the Viva Home is all about. That's on next Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Good, good. Um, so if there any... is any question about SPFX or about XML. <laughs> yeah, we're, thank you, David, on the on the chat. Um, on the questions, if we can actually, I know that the, we're, we're muted on the on the, uh, on the the attendee side, and that's intentional because there's too many people to be able to do audio questions at this point. But if there's questions, we can people can put on the chat. And if there isn't, it's okay. You can you can drop already at this point. We're just extending the call to be a bit longer. Um, thank you Let's anyway for Nikolai, Why? Marcus, and Dan. Yeah, yeah, while waiting for uh, uh, any uh, additional question, if any, let me just uh, remind to the people that, uh, of course, the recording of this video will be available and it will be available within 24 hours from now. So don't try to download the one which will be automatically generated by Teams, but wait wait for the one which will become available in the PMP, Microsoft 365 Community PMP YouTube channel. You can see here the link. And remember that uh, we will have uh, the next uh, Viva Connection SPFX call on February the 9th. And uh, next week, as Visa said, there will be the next 35 power uh, uh, platform call, as well as you can find all of the other calls in the link AKMS slash community slash calls. So uh, I don't see any uh, question in the chat, if I'm not mistaken. I just see comments and jokes, which are totally fine, but <laughs> yeah. are not questions. Yeah. They're all making fun exactly. of me because they love it's... XML. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I feel proud it's, of it's it. It's okay you know? to close five minutes early because that will yeah. give everybody okay. some flexibility. So. so we can close. Enjoy your uh, five more minutes in your life today and see you soon. Thank you so much.